What up, boys? What up, boys? So today we're gonna work on the next version of the Ripstick, which is Ripstick Dual Drive, AKA All Wheel Drive. So let's go back to where we started. We had uh, this Ripstick that I made in my last video. I basically motorized it uh, on one wheel using some 3D printed parts and belts and pulleys. And now I'm going to, you know, it worked pretty well. It was decently fast. Um, but I was like, why not just do it times two and put it on both? Cause it's all just 3D printed parts. I just got to reprint them and reassemble it. So that is what we're going to do today. Oh yeah. Look at this. Both drive trains fully assembled. New wheels. Both of them pivot. Both of them spin. The belts are nice and tight. We're ready to send it after I put on the electronics. Bing, boom, bing, bong, bada, bop, pow, boys and girls. Here we have the fully electric wired up ripstick ready to ride. We got some custom 3D printed battery mounts for my lipos. Uh, ESCs are double sided tape stuck on along with the receiver. Some nice swivelage for my wires and motors in the rear as well. This thing is ready to go. So it's uh, time to send it. Welcome boys and girls to my bedroom, which has become my workshop since I'm not at home. It's what I got to work with. So this is the layout of parts. Uh, basically, it's the same design as last time, copied twice for front and rear wheels. But there's a couple of new changes that are worth mentioning. Uh, biggest one is I changed the tooth profile on the belts. So you can see this is the old one, it's the new one. And there's quite a difference in tooth. So this will be uh, heavier duty, less likely to slip and get more grip. I had to reprint the tooth profile on the pulley, of course, um, but it all worked out. Got new wheels, uh, which have the more typical rims as opposed to these old reversion ripstick wheels. And then I had to, you know, print the pulley so they'd actually fit in the rim. But it all works. You can kind of see. Oops. Yeah, like that. It gets pressed all the way in. Uh, next. Uh, one of my faults with last design is the the motor mount. This piece right here actually cracked, and that's because I have the motor on the right side of this piece and the belt on the left side, and the belt was tensioned to kind of pull this thing in. So eventually it cracked, but I wanted to be able to make a 3D pin design that could withstand that force without having to CNC the motor mount. So I came up with this support guard that basically fits inside the, or you know, it fits in line with the motor guard like this and basically has like a cage so that now it can be supported uh, on both sides and not flex as much and I had tested this under load and it worked pretty well the craziest improvement was that I actually got rid of the metal pulleys which I know most of you think is a terrible idea and are like why would you ever do that Eric plastic is super weak but I was actually able to 3D print these pulleys um, using a D-shaft shape, focus, and that actually allowed me to, after putting a D on this motor, which you can see right there, basically made it possible to transfer torque pretty, pretty well under load with a 3D printed pulley. So... I know you guys are saying like it's not going to last you more than like a minute. Well, it already lasted me 20 minutes. So I'm going to be pretty happy with it for now. And guess what? All I have to do is re 3D print them when it wears down instead of buying a whole new pulley. The other difficulty is that this t new belt profile, which by the way is HTD5M 
270 or 275 millimeters in loop length. They don't have pulleys that fit that tooth profile that are this, um, see this pulley was for the old belt. So for the new belt, they don't have pulleys that are like this small that fit the profile. They're always really, really wide. So it was really convenient to be able to custom the sh customize the shape and 3D print it, even though it definitely isn't going to last as long. So uh, that's the new stuff. Basically, I got the same, oh, a couple other new things. On the main brackets that hold the, the whole assembly on, um, to keep it from pivoting, instead of using these 3D printed nubs, right? Focus. Okay, well, there are nubs there. It's not focusing. But I basically put holes, and then I'm going to use these bolts right here to go through those holes and keep the whole thing from pivoting. And those are basically to keep it on the caster. And it, it kind of lines up with the caster so that it doesn't rotate. Batteries are the same as last time. Trinity Nanotech 4S 2.65 amp hours. Um, my ESCs are 16 amp YEP ESCs. Regular two-channel transmitter from a car. And my receiver, or sorry, receiver transmitter. Yeah, I got a little bit of hardware. And yes, let's get it. Oh, motor, motor, motor. SK3 52, 4250, 350 kV. Same one as last time. Now I have two of them. I did have to make the, the modification to the shaft. Let's put it together. Here we have first test ride. I'm trying to go, this will slide uphill. I'm gonna try to hit full speed by the end. Here we go. Still cruises really well. It's actually very torquey, as you can see. Some waving. acceleration. Hey guys, so thanks for watching my video. So I just want to let you know that you guys can build your own dual drive motorized ripstick just by downloading my 3D printed parts off Thingiverse and getting your own ripstick. The whole design was done with no like holes drilled in the caster, no like real serious modifications to the, to the original ripstick. So if you download my parts, get your own, you can assemble and build your, build your very own by yourself. Uh, good luck to you all and see you guys next time.